So it's time for another full length tutorial. And in this episode, we're going to be shooting an environmental portrait of my Brazilian Jiu Jitsu instructor here in Puerto Rico. Big thanks to all of the sponsors for making this video possible. We're going to be talking about each one of these products throughout the video, but make sure you check out the description of this video for links to each one of these products as well. So what is an environmental portrait? Well, it's somebody usually in their environment. I love environmental portraits because we can use all the same lighting techniques that we would use with somebody when they come into the studio, but we have so much potential for an interesting background in the shot. And of course, we can light up the background as well to make the entire image more interesting. Now, some environmental portraits are super easy to pull off. You go to an amazing location, you get a correct exposure with somebody with a beautiful background, and you're done. But other times you're showing up to strange locations and you have to think on the fly and figure out how to take a boring location and make it look pretty incredible in a photograph. So we are currently in downtown Umacao in Puerto Rico. This is my Brazilian Jiu Jitsu gym and this thing is authentic. It's like a grungy warehouse, no AC. Sometimes we don't even have power. But we come here every day, we roll, we get sweaty, and we have a blast. Now when I get hired to shoot an environmental portrait, I like showing up really early so that I can scout the location and I'm not wasting the subject's time. Moreno's actually in here, he's doing some other things, but I told him that I need a full hour, not just to scout out, but also to set up all the lighting. I don't wanna be wasting his time while I'm figuring things out. So when I tell him I'm ready, I'm gonna have everything dialed in. I love this gym because it has so much character. Let's head inside, I'll show you a few different areas that we have to potentially shoot, and then I'll talk through my thought process as I actually figure out where I wanna take each picture. All right, so this is the main Brazilian Jiu Jitsu mat. There's a couple more rooms that I'll take you to in just a second. I think, I'm probably going to do all the pictures here. I'm nervous that if I put Moreno in the front here and then fire back this way, I'm going to have to make up my own lighting and put some strobes back here to light up uh, the back of this room so it's not just a black hole. If I think about spinning around and shooting this way, we have this big open window and door, all this natural light's coming inside. And even if I was able to get a correct exposure, there's just cars parked outside. So I'm not sure that this is the best option either. Now, when you're hired for an environmental portrait, you can go one of two routes. You could try to put all of your planning into one single shot, and that's fine. A lot of photographers do that. It gives you the opportunity to go all out and do something super complex if that's what you're into. I personally like options. I don't wanna put all of my eggs in one basket because I've been to photo shoots before where the photographer has gone all out and then the client's gone, can we do another shot over here? I don't really like that background. And they've been preparing the shot all day. So when it comes to my environmental portrait shoots, I like to have at least two shots planned, if not three. For this photo shoot, I'm going to do three. Now this is the weight room. And once again, super authentic, grungy. I love the vibe in here. Moreno used to be an MMA fighter, but now he's just working on jujitsu. And for that reason, I don't think that I wanna shoot in here, but come take a look at this wall right here. The texture in this wall is amazing. I mean, we pay hundreds and thousands of dollars for these hand-painted muslin backgrounds that look like this, and this is just what the wall looks like naturally. So even though I probably won't shoot in here, if I wanna do a quick portrait with Moreno, I want something a little bit more interesting in the background than a plain white or black wall, this is definitely an option as well. All right, this is the karate room. This is probably the most put together room, but at the same time, it doesn't really scream Brazilian Jiu Jitsu to me. I think I'm ruling this room out completely. All right, so I've got some of the gear for today and this new backpack by Low Pro. This is the Photoactive BP300AW, and they're our first sponsor for today's video. This backpack is really interesting, and uh, the standard backpack, you know, you have one zipper in the front and it opens up and you can get to everything from the top. There's another type of backpack where it opens from the back and you can open that up and get everything from the back. The new type of backpacks have zippers in the side so you can kind of bring it over to one side while you're still wearing it and get to your camera and everything. This backpack has three compartments in one which makes it really, really interesting. So in the top here, I have the camera that we're going to be shooting with today. This is the Fujifilm X-T3. But you'll notice that it also has these compartments on the side as well. So you can open these up and then get to individual things from the side here. So I have two lenses on this side, but then if you wanna get to the other side, we have individual compartments here as well. So I have more lenses, I have two Profoto remotes here. 
So these side pockets allow you to continue to wear the backpack and just kind of pull it in front of you like this. So if you're looking for a backpack with a totally new design, you like being able to access the pouches from the side or the top, definitely check out the PhotoActive BP 300 AW by Low Pro. It's pretty cool. Now, if you're being hired for one of these jobs, you need to talk with the client and figure out where these images are going to be used. Is this going to be a widespread that covers both pages of a magazine? Is there going to be copy on the left side or the right side? Do you need to leave headspace for a title above your subject's head? All of these things are really important to figure out ahead of time. Now, obviously we're just taking this picture for the sake of this video, but I still wanna get at least one vertical shot or one horizontal shot so that I have some variety. So I've just been walking around now, taking snapshots with the X-T3, and uh, there are a few things that I thought might work, and then I I'm just getting nervous again with the exposure. This is such a deep room. It's so dark back here and so bright towards the front. That's gonna be really difficult to balance. I'll give it a try, but as I'm shooting a test shot of this red bench with this grungy black wall here, we have this really interesting pipe coming in diagonally. And then we have this plastic down here with the ball. Oh, this is left over from Maria. This place was destroyed in the hurricane. We also have this, this exhaust fan up here. All of this is working together and it's so cool. So I have to at least do one shot with Morena right here just because it's gonna be so easy. I could probably use one hard light right here. Throw some really hard shadows from the side. I think it's gonna look great. All right, today we are going to be lighting this scene with Profoto B10s. Uh, if you guys haven't heard of Profoto before, they are like the Lamborghini of the lighting industry. Yes, they are extremely expensive, but what you're paying for is like incredible design packed into this really small unit. These are my favorite lights of all time. They're battery powered, but they can also be used with AC power at the same time if you want to. We use them plugged in a lot in the studio, and then when we need to move them around, maybe the cable's not long enough, we just unplug it, and the battery will last for hours during a shoot. Today, I'm hoping that we're gonna be able to do everything battery powered. On top of the X-T3, we have the Pro Photo Air Remote. This allows us to change the power of the light up and down. I can also set multiple groups, so if I have lights in the background, I can change those independently of the one that we have on the key light. And this also has an LED hot light. I don't think we're going to be using it today just because it's kind of bright right here. But when we're in the studio, we use it all the time. Sometimes it helps with focusing and seeing what you're actually doing. Sometimes we actually shoot video with the light. Now, when it comes to modifiers, I've brought a range. We've got reflector dishes, soft boxes, grids. I think because we're shooting a badass fighter, I wanna go with hard light. So I'm probably gonna be starting off with a reflector dish, maybe moving around with grids and stuff from there. Now, as I mentioned in one other video, this has become my favorite light stand of all time. This is the Manfrotto 420B. What I love about this is it's a standard light stand and boom in one. Obviously in this orientation, it goes up and down, but then we can loosen this and turn it into a boom. And because the Pro Photo is so relatively light, we can get this right over our subject's head and the, the light stand will remain completely outside the shot. So this is probably what I'm going to be using a lot today for our key light. All right, so this is Moreno. He's my BJJ instructor down here in Puerto Rico. Thank you for modeling for me today. I'm excited Thanks, about this. Uh, now, there are two poses that every Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu practitioner must know. You're doing one right now. This one or this one. That's it. Those are the That's only it. two poses that I know. It's, it's like a joke within the industry and, and you're not allowed to smile. You must have a serious face. Exactly. I don't want to do that, that, either one of those poses for this shoot. I want to do something where you're sitting down on the ground and that way we can play with your weight a little bit more. If every picture is arms crossed or arms on the belt, it's like they all look the same. The same, yeah. So I'm thinking we're going to do one with you sitting here, one with you sitting over there, and one with you sitting in the back. And I know this is probably not what you had planned at all, but hopefully, hopefully we can get you something a little bit different. Because I've been on your Facebook. And you've got the you've got the arms cross shot. Like always. You got the belt yeah. shot. So I'm trying to give you some variety here. All right. All right. So for this first shot here, I'm just going to be using one light as my test, and then we will add lights in the background. I I can already tell this gym is just going to go black in the background. But let me get the lighting right on Moreno first, and then we'll work up to that. Now at this point, Moreno is one of my friends, and he was nice enough to model for this video, but. 
I still want to respect his time. I don't want to be coming up with shoot ideas that are failures. Y you know it happens all the time where you think you have a good idea, you take a few snapshots and you go, eh, I don't know, let's, let's try something else. I don't want to do that in front of him. And you can imagine if you were hired by a magazine and you were shooting a complete stranger, you want to be even more professional with somebody you don't know. So right now with the light this close to Moreno's face, I'm getting an even exposure on his face, but it's falling off very quickly onto the rest of his body. I'm just going to move the entire light source back just a little bit. I'm also going to raise it up just a little bit. So hopefully the exposure across his head and his entire body will even out a little bit. You can see that we have some nice fill light hitting Moreno naturally just from this window, this front door that we have here. If I turn on the light, and we add this hard punch, I think it looks great as is. I don't think we really need to worry about light on Moreno anymore, but the back of the gym is going really, really dark. So I'm going to add one more light all the way in the back, and let's see if we can fire it through that doorway, light up this uh, rack that we have on the back right side, and see if we can get a little bit more interest in the back of the frame. So all the way in the back here, you can see it's really, really dark. I've got a Pro Photo B10 firing across to hit this rack that we have back here, hopefully just adding a little bit of light. I'm also putting it inside this door frame here so that it'll throw just a few hard shadows onto that other wall. Again, adding a little bit more interest. I don't wanna put the light in the frame and just have it blasting. I, I, I'd like for it to really feel like sunlight coming through. So as you can see, we've got something great to work with here. Moreno looks good, the back of the gym looks good, but then the middle part of the gym is still totally black, and we also have these really dark black mats as well. To fix this, I'm going to add a light way in the back firing directly at the camera. Hopefully that's gonna add a nice kicker light on the opposite darker side of Moreno's face, and hopefully we'll also be able to light up the middle part of the gym as well as these black mats. So let's give that a try. This looks good, three, two, one. Moreno, try looking like down in this way, perfect. Play with your weight a little bit, like maybe sit up a little bit, perfect, yep. If I'm noticing that you know our key light's a little too bright or maybe one of the lights in the background is too bright, I have them set to group A, B, and C right here and I'm just changing the energy directly from this remote. I'm gonna really exaggerate this position. I'm gonna push the camera in here. I'm still shooting really wide, but that's going to make the, the hand and the belt a little bit bigger in the frame. Let's talk about our next sponsor. This is the Manfrotto B-Free tripod. And this is one of the most interesting tripods I've ever used. First of all, it comes with a nice case. And what's really interesting about this design is that it's inverted so that it can pack into an even smaller case than you would normally think. Most tripod heads stick out beyond the legs, but this tripod head was designed to fit exactly the same length inside of these legs here. So the way this tripod works is you invert all of these legs you can hear them snapping into place here. And then you lower the center column back into the middle of the tripod. Now I've used a decent amount of travel tripods and usually what happens as you get smaller and smaller is they become less and less robust. Obviously they become smaller, but everything seems to get a little cheaper too. I think they're trying to save weight maybe. That is not the case with this tripod. This is one of the sturdiest tripods. There's just no flex in these legs. And every time I've used another tripod that's this size, it just feels kind of plasticky. This doesn't at all. Now this tripod comes in a few different variations. This is obviously the carbon fiber version. This is also really interesting carbon fiber. It's like a glossy carbon fiber. It looks totally different than the other Manfrotto tripods that we have in here. I like the way it looks, I think it's cool. You can also get this in aluminum. And when it comes to the locking mechanisms, this is a screw type lock. If you don't like the screw locks, you can also get the snap lock version as well. I like that there's options. I really dig the ball head that's on top of this. It's got a standard knob that you can obviously uh, loosen to, to move the camera around, turn it to lock it. Down here we have another knob that's just going to change the uh, horizontal movement, panning backwards and forwards, but then, in the middle of this tension knob here, you can turn the inside of this to change the drag. So as you can see, now it's super loose, but if I turn just the center of this, it becomes harder and harder to turn. This is great if you're gonna be using a heavy camera. Apparently this tripod is one of Manfrotto's most popular products, and I see why. 
Honestly, I've never been a huge fan of travel tripods. I feel like a high quality tripod fits in my luggage. It's not really a problem. This is the first travel tripod that I actually really like. I'm planning a trip right now to Europe. I think this is what I'm going to bring. I'm just taking background plates with a longer exposure. It's gonna give me some options to light paint in, some more natural looking light if I feel like the strobes are a little bit too harsh once I get back into post. Keep in mind, I would not be able to do this if I didn't have a tripod because I'm shooting right now at a quarter of a second. Now, while I was shooting Moreno, I was a little stressed out. One, it was hotter than hell in that building. I'm sweating, you can see it coming through my shirt. So I was already super uncomfortable, but we also didn't have that much time until the next class started to show up and I had to be done before those students got there. Looking back at the images that I took now, I wish that I had told Moreno to squinch a little bit in this first shot. Because I'm so close to his face, there's details in his facial expressions that you won't see when we take the other wider shots in a second. But this shot here, I absolutely love it, but I learned from Peter Hurley. It's all about that squinch. You need that intensity in the eyes. And I just feel like I could have done a little bit better, but again, for some reason, it, was, it just wasn't on my mind. I, I wasn't coaching Moreno as well as I probably should have been, and so that's one of my regrets. All right, so I think we have a lot of options to work with from this location. Let's head over to the red pillar in the middle of the gym, see if we can come up with something there. So for the next shot, I didn't even want Moreno looking into the camera. I thought it would be cool for it to be kind of an environmental portrait where it's him in his element, but he's not interacting with the camera at all. And go ahead, like you can lean back how you are, and can you also pull your lapel down a little bit? Can we do one where your belt is in your left hand as well? Same kind of thing. Now, if you're hired for a job like this, keep in mind that the aspect ratio that your camera is shooting is going to be different than the aspect ratio of, of the printed magazine or wherever they're publishing it online. So there's probably going to be some cropping. So I think it's good practice to shoot a little bit wider than you think you should, just so it gives you some options when you get into post. So for the first shot, Moreno was looking right into the camera. It was more of a standard portrait. For this shot, I don't want him looking to the camera at all. I positioned him on the left side of the frame and he's just looking into the middle of the frame. There's a lot of dead space on the right. If this was being shot for a magazine, this would be a great spread shot because you could put text or copy on the right side of the frame. I feel like this is looking really cool. I have this key light in the background that's just giving him this nice uh, rim light along the front of his face. I'm playing with the ambient light simply by changing my shutter speed. And once again, because I'm on a tripod, it's giving me a lot of different options here. I'm going all the way down to 1 15th of a second, and then I'm going up to 1 200th of a second when I wanna cut all that ambient light out. And then I have one more strobe behind that wall all the way in the back that's again lighting up the back part of this scene. Now, I think to make this a little bit more interesting, I might wanna add a little bit more ambience to this room and we've brought a smoke machine. I don't want it to look like the building's on fire or we put a smoke machine in here, but when you have light firing back towards your subject or back towards the camera, having particles in the air can make it look really nice, just adding a little bit of haze to the scene. So let's see if we can turn that on and see what that looks like. So right now we're having the problem of too much smoke, but it's an open air building, so we'll just give it a minute. I just want a hint. I just want to be able to see some of the light trails, but I don't want it to just go pure white in the back. So as I'm moving this light around, when it's firing towards the camera, it's lighting up all that smoke, it's creating a really bright background. But as I slide the light more around, it's shooting perpendicular to Moreno, it looks like a totally different shot. Obviously we have different light on our subject, but we also have a totally different looking background as well. So let's talk about the next sponsor. The camera that I'm shooting with today is the Fujifilm X-T3. This is their APS-C crop sensor camera. It's a mirrorless camera. Now I was introduced to Fujifilm mirrorless cameras a few years ago when I started working with Elia Licardi. And on the last Photographing the World tutorial, he shot almost exclusively with the GFX 50S, which is their medium format camera. We've done some tutorials with that camera as well. Today we're shooting with that camera's little brother, the X-T3. And this is the perfect piece of gear for an environmental portrait because this is an amazingly powerful camera packed into an incredibly small camera body. 
This camera has a retro design with all of the mechanical style knobs on top so that you can see the camera settings without the camera even being on. On the top here, I can see the shutter speed, the ISO, and then on each one of the lenses, there's an old school aperture ring. Obviously, it's some sort of digital hybrid ring here, but I think it's pretty cool that you can physically see what you're setting the aperture to. Now, I've used previous versions of this camera and they have updated almost everything. This is almost like a sports camera and a video camera in one. If you wanna shoot up to 30 frames a second with the digital shutter, it'll crop in a little bit, but you can just hold the button down and shoot 30 frames a second. That's insane. One huge improvement is the autofocus. This thing has eye autofocus that will lock onto a human eye and keep the eye that's in front in focus. I was using this throughout the entire photo shoot. It did amazing. This can shoot 4K, 60 frames per second. It can output to an external recorder at 10 bit. The audio preamp into this sounds fantastic, just as good as our GH5. So basically for $1,400, you're getting an incredible still camera and an incredible video camera in one. Now, of course, Fujifilm cameras are known for their color profiles and portrait photographers love the images straight out of the camera for their accurate colors, but also beautiful skin tones. Of course, for this shoot, I want that grungy look, so we're gonna play with the colors. Now, the lens that I'm using for this shoot is a 16 to 55 2.8 lens. This is approximately 24 to 70 if you were shooting on a full frame sensor. I think this is the perfect lens for a shoot like this. So we've moved to the back of the gym here. This is the really interesting grungy black wall. I absolutely love this with the pipe and the fan back here. We've also got this gorgeous red bench. I'm gonna start with Moreno sitting down and then once we get a few shots with him looking in the direction of our key light over here, I might get him to stand up and we can work on something different. Now for this final shot, we only had five or 10 minutes because students were starting to come in. I started off by lighting Moreno from the side because I wanted to show off all of that incredible texture on the wall. I think I could have lit this shot with a single light, but Patrick said he felt like it needed a little bit of fill. So what we did was we added a boom light with a grid that shined right on Moreno's face. That added just a little bit of detail on the shadow side of his face. And I think these shots look great. So for this shot, I've got kind of my key light coming in from the side. It's creating really hard, dark shadows. But then this light, you would think this would be the key, but we've got it lowered so much that it's really a fill light. Turn your head towards me. Nice. Let me get you to stand up on that red bench. And let me do both hands on the belt. And then I don't know if you'd like cross your legs in front of you or something like that. Yeah, that's it. And let me get you to slide this way just a little bit. That's it right there. Years ago when I was assisting a professional photographer who had spent tons of money on, on new pro photo gear, I asked him, why pro photo? You know, there, there's a ton of other companies out there. Why pro photo? And he said, because I like their mounting system. I like how easy everything goes onto the light and everything just locks into place. This one doesn't even have a lock because it's so lightweight, but the standard mechanism is just this rubber ring here that you then lock in. And then with friction, it just holds it in place. So I brought a lot of pro photo gear to the shoot just to be prepared, but I ended up using only what you see on this table. This is the B10 itself the Pro Photo Air Remote, a grid, this is what we used for the uh, final shot, and then a reflector dish that just helps focus the light forward. It also enhances the light a little bit so you're not losing light as spill on the sides. But can you imagine a much more compact system than this? Just a few years ago, we were showing up with lights and wires and power packs that we'd have to figure out where to plug in. It was such a pain in the butt. Now we can fit these lights in the palm of our hands. They're battery powered, but if they run out, we can still plug them in if we need to. It just doesn't get any easier than this. We're done. Thank you so much. Now, I didn't have very high hopes for this image. I thought it was kind of cool, but it was so plain. It's just a black wall and he's standing right up against it. But as it always happens, these were Moreno's favorite images and we took them with the least amount of time. You want to take a look at these? Oh, of course. Damn, that one looks nice. Wow. So I got three completely different shots in one hour, but it is 6.02. So we went over by two minutes. He needs to get to teaching and we have a lot of packing up to do. All right, guys, we are back on the computer. It's time for post-processing and to talk about our fifth and final sponsor.
If you've been following our other full-length tutorials recently, you know that we've been ending all of our images working in Alien Skins Exposure X4. Now, if you're trying to make your digital images look like a certain type of film or a certain type of processing, or you just want to give your images a look, I haven't found anything that comes close to exposure when it comes to this sort of thing, but you can do a lot more in exposure. And so I wanted to open up the software independently of Photoshop now, if you have a memory card in your card reader and you open up this software, it's going to come up with this copy photos from card dialog. And what's really cool about this is you can actually see all of the thumbnails right here. This makes it really easy to only download the photos that you want, but in my case, I'm going to move them all over to the computer. So real quick, what I'm going to do is cycle through each one of these images here and give them a star rating. I can just hit one through five on the number pad and we'll be right back. Okay, I think I've picked out my three favorite from the three different locations. Here's the first one, second one, and third one here. Now, you may have noticed that Moreno has a black eye. He got that uh, rolling with another black belt, and uh, he was worried about that. He said, oh, we should postpone the shoot until I don't have a black eye anymore. But the truth is, looking at these images, I actually like the black eye. I was planning on retouching it out, uh, but I think I'm going to leave it. And then when I look at Moreno's skin, I was planning on doing some skin retouching. There's almost nothing I have to do. Moreno, if you're watching this, you have incredibly perfect skin. So maybe he's got like a couple of blemishes here. Let me show you what you can do to fix that. Up here at the top on the right hand side, I'm going to click this uh, Band-Aid button. And all we have to do is click on these little blemishes the software will automatically choose skin that it thinks uh, you should be working next to. And uh, if it does a bad job for whatever reason, all you have to do is grab this location and move it over. So super, super easy. Now, if we look on the left side under presets, this is where we can find all of the different looks. And uh, these are categorized into tons of different things, black and white film, different types of color film. Along the top here, you can click all color, black and white, favorite. And what I like to do is go through each one of these. And when I find one that I really like, I'll click this star in the upper right hand corner and then they'll show up under my favorites. So these are just a few favorites that have worked for other images that I've used. And then when you mouse over these shots, you can see it's completely changing the way these images look. If you click on one of these images, it will stick. And then we can click on this before button up here to see the before and after of what it looked like before and after we added this effect. So as I go through a few of these favorites, the one that keeps standing out to me is this faded magazine look. And uh, it really mutes the colors. You get this dark and brown tone throughout this entire image that I think really works with Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and fighting and stuff. So I think this is what I'm going to want to work with. Now, once we've chosen a preset, we can move over to the right hand side and we can fine tune the image. The first thing that I'm going to do is click the crop and rotate button here. And I'm just going to try to get our verticals a little bit straighter. Now, if you feel like this effect is a little bit strong, you can go up here to the opacity under layers and we can just tone this down a little bit until it's just right. I think something around 70% is probably pretty good. And maybe it's still a little bit too dark for you. We can go through with all the sliders. If you're familiar to Lightroom, it's gonna work very similarly. And we can go through and just fine tune this image. Under details, we can add sharpening. And if you hold control and click, it'll zoom into 100% and you can really see what you're doing here. Now, if you wanted to go in and fine tune each individual color, you could do that under the color panel. Check out the uh, red that he has on his rash guard here. I can pull this and completely change the color. I could also mess with Moreno's gi, make him look like he's wearing a purple gi. He would choke me out for doing that. I will put it back. Now under the vignette panel, if I want to darken the edges a little bit, I could add just a little bit of darkening. I know how much you guys hate when we go crazy with the vignette, so I'm really going to uh, keep, it, keep it pretty light, but it can just add a little bit more interest to the center of the frame. Now under the overlays panel, you can add borders, we can add lighting effects, there's tons of different things. I don't think these images really call for that, so I'm not going to go this deep for this image, but I feel like this looks pretty good. Uh, because I took three images together, 
I feel like each one of them should kind of match. So I'm going to do the same effect on the next two as well. You can hit Control Shift C or Command Shift C if you're on a Mac to copy all of the settings and Control Shift V to paste. And we're gonna kind of work through the exact same thing. The first thing I'm going to do is rotate this, get our vertical lines perfectly straight. Now for this image, we have tons of dead space on the right. And I feel like we could add a little bit of interest to that with some color. I'm gonna try this. I'm gonna click add layer under layers up here. And then I'm going to click this Kodak E100S. That's gonna add a lot of blues and purples and magentas to the back of this image. And then I'm going to click on the mask right here, which is this little white area. And then I can just kind of click where I want to remove this color. If we slide down here, you can see that we have all of these different options for our brush size and the feather and the flow and everything. Let's make it really dark. So I'm just gonna take all of this blue off of this side of the shot. And then of course, if we click show mask down here, you can see that our mask is horrible. What I'm going to do to feather this a little bit more is I'm going to just change the size of our brush here. And then I'm just going to paint it like this. And this is probably a little bit too much. It's a little bit too blue. So we can once again, lower the opacity just on this top layer and get that where we want it. All right, for the final shot here, you'll notice that in the upper left-hand corner, you can see the light stand. That was a little sloppy of me. Let's see if we can use the healing tool here. And I'm just going to paint over this. Let's zoom in. And I'm gonna paint over this bar here. And let's just see what happens. Now you'll notice that it naturally grabbed a piece of the wall that makes no sense. I'm just gonna grab this and pull it up. Now that actually did a pretty good job and I'm going to crop by this a lot anyway. So let's come down and then we'll come up a little bit. Like that looks pretty good. Once again, I'm going to choose Faded Magazine. Let's lower the opacity just a little bit. And that's it guys, pretty simple edit we have here. And I feel like each one of these images, because we've used that faded magazine on all three, even though I've changed the colors a little bit, I feel like these images really flow nicely together. It feels like this is a cohesive set of images. Now, the best thing about Alien Skin software is that it is 100% free to try. Head over to their website, download Exposure X4, give it a try, I guarantee you're gonna love it. And if you do and you decide to buy it, use the code down below, you'll be able to save some extra money. So that wraps up this photo shoot. Big thanks to all of our sponsors. And if you'd like to learn from many of the best photographers in the world, head over to fstoppers.com slash store. You can check out all of our full length photography tutorials and head over to fstoppers.com every single day for free content just like this.